I apologize for my appearance. Hair and makeup couldn't make it to the set today. Now that you understand the process of creating the permanent notes and adding them to the slip box, the next struggle that you have, that you'll have is the resisting the urge to create too much order inside of the slip box. The whole point of it is that you're, you just accumulate knowledge as you go about reading and learning and developing your own, um, your own intellect, so to speak. And then by magic um, of using this the slip box, these topics or areas kind of bubble up from the bottom and they surface that way. And it's really difficult to relinquish the control um, and try to impose structure on the slip box versus letting that come up uh, because then you, you don't really know how to find your way back to knowledge. And that is the purpose of the structure note. So we've already provided some structure in the slip box with the index, but the structure note is especially important inside the digital version because there were many other types of notes that existed inside the physical version. One would be a note that would explain a sequence, another that would um, explain a, a collection of notes. So let's say we fast forward in the slip box, we've read a couple more books, um, or we've finished the how to take smart notes, and we notice that our index is completely populated by smart notes. Um, notes, but inside of the Smart Notes book, it does talk about things like we had we had seen in the Smart Note about mastery, and so now we have this break of we've got mastery now inside of our entire index that is massively or overwhelmingly a majority of just kind of really specific Smart Notes literature, and that's where you can bring a structure note in to provide a temporarily valid structure. So right now the index is. Everything is fluid inside of the slip box as far as the structure is concerned. So we just have the index at this point, and now we want to move the smart notes, specific notes, into a structure note. Um, and then also, if you were to kind of fast forward and just think through, say you were collecting a bunch of um, tips on writing, which is something that I've been doing, and then you're just adding them to the box and giving them different names in order. And then you realize like, oh, I have all these things in my index that really could be broadly summarized um, around productive writing. And I'll show you an example of what my slip box current looks like to give you more of an idea. But the main thing that I want to stress with the structure note is that it is the minimum necessary structure that will avoid complete chaos in your slip box. Because without the structure notes and without the index, you really have this flat structure that just has sequences that you would have to kind of remember and navigate to. Um, but it is also giving just enough that you're no longer... Um, it also provides enough flexibility with being temporary where you can rename it and you're not locked into this hierarchy that is uh, that usually comes with creating a topical top-down approach to cataloging your notes. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it would look like to create a structure note uh, in Obsidian. So here we are back in Obsidian. I'll make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. And we're at the index. And we're realizing that we kind of have two kind of paths here in the slipbox. We have this permanent notes and note sequences, which are very specific to smart notes or the Zettelkast method. Uh, and then we have mastery, which is kind of like a higher level, very undeveloped area of knowledge that we have inside of our slip box. And this is gonna be really short because the structure notes really are, uh, the most difficult thing is, is discovering what the name of the structure note should be because the structure note basically uh, essentially becomes a topic or subtopic inside of your index that you can navigate to. The way that I think about this is uh, layers of resolution. So right now we have the highest level possible that we can have in our slipbox, and we should be as far zoomed out as possible into our topics. So just looking at this, there's kind of two res layers of resolution that I see here. One is notes about smart notes, and one is about mastery, which I haven't dived into, and I don't have any depth in that knowledge. So it should be at the top level of the index. But for the index, what we can do to create a structure note is just to add a new link called Smart Notes, um, and that's the name that I'll use. And I'll just cut this. And this is why the digital version is so great, because in the physical, you would have to rewrite all this with the digital. Um, physical, you would have to rewrite. Digital, you would have. You can just copy and paste. Um, so we'll just click that to create a new note. So how I did that was I held down Command. It would be Control and Windows, and I did a left click, um, and we can paste it in here. And now we've got the beginning of a structure note. So if we go back to the index, it's a little bit, you can see those layers start to build out of the resolution where, okay, the mastery, I've only got one note towards it. Maybe I should go read a, a book called Mastery by Robert Greene. 
Um, that might help me figure that out. That's on my reading list. Um, but if I wanted to add more smart notes, this is where I should do it. Now, what I tend to do here is I wait. Instead of using the sequences, I found them less effective in the digital version. I think they still add value, but I'm really torn right now on how much value adding the sequences is. I do find a lot of value in hiding the name or not naming the notes because it, you know, like I've said before, it avoids kind of availability bias. It gets me past that first time struggle of, you know, naming something is really difficult and it gets me writing notes a lot more efficiently. Um, but what I do do is I use these keywords now. So like assuming, assume I just had these in the index and I didn't have any keywords assigned to them. What I do in a structure note is I make sure that every note is assigned a keyword and when it gets to three to four, because that was what Lumen um, limited the amount of notes inside of his physical version to, um, I create another structure note. So I'll fast forward here in a second with another vault. But what I would do once I get four notes for smart notes, or for permanent notes in smart notes, I would make permanent notes a structure note. Um, so let me open up another vault and we will um, walk through what that looks like. We'll kind of fast forward, say we populate this entire slip box. Um, at the end of my reading the smart notes, I took 74 notes. Uh, and so we'll be able to play around with the structure with a lot more notes. So what you see here is the vault being fast forwarded to the point where I've imported all the 74 permanent notes that I took on how to take smart notes. I don't recommend that you get that crazy with it. Um, hopefully you can benefit from this course and uh, the efforts that I've had to shorten that learning curve for you. So I've imported all those notes into here and I've cataloged, the, um, kind of built up the knowledge from the bottom up as I took the notes and added them in the slip box. And here's the structure that I came up with. Now, you're gonna probably come up with a completely different structure because your interests and ideas and understanding is gonna be different than mine. Um, so what you see with the links here, these are structure notes. So in the end, I came up with uh, two structure notes. I had smart notes, which we had just created, and then uh, productive writing, um, mastery, which we had talked about. Now you can see there's several others that haven't quite met that bar of you know, four or more notes that would make me want to turn it into a structure note. Um, for example, information overload or cognitive resource management, they're getting close and non-toxic productivity. These are kind of keywords that I that I came up with that to help me articulate and describe particular notes that I have. So if you look at resource management, one um, from page 71 of Smart Notes is the idea I really took from that page was, you know, mental uh, resources required for learning are limited. There are, there's your attention, there's your working memory, um, all that have limitations that you need to be aware of when you're trying to learn. So cognitive resource management was kind of the, the key word that I had for that. And I, I suspect that's gonna, um, going to expand as I'm now doing research into like what reading effect, how reading affects the brain and stuff like that. So I'm sure it'll be tied. And it'll probably be tied to this non-toxic productivity, you know, kind of anti uh, hustle culture, so to speak. So again, let's just dive into smart notes and see what this looks like. So it shouldn't shock you that this now looks like an outline because that's the whole point. You know, the whole point of the slipbox is to help you and to prepare you for writing. Uh, and it also shouldn't shock you that this is kind of the way that the course is outlined because this is how this uh, came about and was structured. As I read smart notes and took notes on it, the natural consequence um, when I had enough understanding was to be able to articulate it in writing and now in video form because I've already spent the cycles to, to write about it. Um, so let's go in. You can see that I'm using keywords here to describe the different elements of slip of the method, of the Zettelkasten method. Um, and some of them themselves have turned into subtopics. So productive writing and note taking. Uh, but if we go down here just for a moment and we take a look at permanent notes. So I have all the different types of notes laid out, which we had previously talked about. But if you remember in the smaller version of this vault that we walked through creating the notes, I had a keyword, a permanent note. And so that has since turned into its own structure note. Now I'm still tinkering with uh, whether to use aliases or to keep the Zettelkast an ID. Um, but I'm kind of favoring not using the alias, because what the alias allows you to do is just go, um, you can search for it and find it. Again, Command-O, Control-O, 
permanent note, you can now find it and you can also use aliases. So if I wanted to just search for permanent note, it'll create the alias for me, which is great. The disadvantage of the alias is it doesn't yet show in the graph view. So I'll show you that right now. But if we look at the open local graph and we minimize this so we can see it better, we can see that this isn't descriptive in the graph view. I can hover over it and, and see that it is a permanent note. Uh, but with structure notes and topic subtopic notes, it's useful to see in the graph. I'm still holding the line that the individual notes themselves, the names don't matter and they should be obfuscated because it, when you're looking at the graph view, you're really looking at like a state level map or a country level map. It's, so it's all about the, the layers of resolution and how much information you want to get. If you can imagine all of these being named, it crowds out the topic notes and you can do some things with color coding, but it crowds them out. So this is easier, like all numbers I can ignore. I care about the subtopic. And then the subtopic has all these related notes. So now you could rename this to permanent note. And it's a little bit easier. So permanent note, then we say, oh, taking permanent notes, that makes sense. And I can start to navigate uh, back to the notes. So that's my stance on that. But if you look, um, this particular note, this in here has one, two, has four, and then six. So it's still a really good structure. It's helping me understand this particular topic of a permanent note, which is a subtopic of smart notes as a whole. But if you looked at um, the structure note for smart notes that we have here, I do have other topics in there. Uh, and this is a key thing to remember is just because a structure note is inside of smart notes does not mean that it can't be found also in the index. So any note or sequence can be attached to in the physical version, any number of sequences or any number of indexes. So it can go everywhere. And if you look at that, my index, you'll see that I have productive writing at the top too, but it is also related to smart notes. And so that's why I have it there as well. Um, so that's how you build the structure. And this very much flows with Obsidian where it's all about links. It's about navigating those links. And that is what we'll talk about in the next video.